game. He is Joe Watson from the Essendon Footy Club. Everybody, please make it. Yeah. Well, first, just one more time, congratulate you on being Tour of the Year last yeah, well year. Now, we, we did you have, we had you at the grand final, our grand final show, and you were surrounded by 80 year old women. Um, you still catching up with those women? or? Well, uh, not only did I win a barbecue, Husey, but I also got a hell of a lot of numbers. So, very <laughs> busy. <laughs> you were strewn in, uh, strewn in big underpants, too, at the time, as far as I remember. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I was, uh, yeah, I've been very busy because of uh, what you guys did. So, oh, no. Thank you. Well, One of those pairs of underpants was yours, wasn't it? <laughs> I might have tried to get, get on board, Michael. You know, it's a good opportunity for me oh, just yeah. to throw me knickers on an AFL. Club, ca uh, club captain, but <laughs> uh, scores from last night. Very, very awkward moment there. Uh, last night, you may not want to. Uh, you may not want to think about what we've just been talking about. You may not want to look at these uh, scores from last night, Joe. It was the MCG. It was Friday night footy. And unfortunately for Essendon supporters, they did a bit of a number on you, the Demons. They did. The Melbourne unit that was accused of playing bruise free footy last week actually laid 27 more tackles than their opponents last night, led by Geordie McKenzie, who, who laid a staggering 13. To put that in perspective, his next best Melbourne player laid seven tackles and the best Essendon player, the best Essendon tackler laid five. Now, Job, I don't know what you, you think about this. You've dropped games in the last couple of weeks to Richmond, last night to Melbourne. There'd be opponents that you'd think that, you know, you'd match up pretty well against. Is this the inevitable dip after the high of a new coach? Um, it's interesting. I think that what it does show is how even the competition is. Um, and this probably, when you look at the ladder, you see four teams who have probably cleared away from the, the rest of the pack, um, and that's the, the current top four. And I think it shows that if you're not prepared to um, to turn up to a game and be ready to play, then um, that means that the, the teams are very closely matched well, and, and I you think can it, be beaten. It's simpler than that, though, isn't it? No Job, no Essendon. <laughs> that's the answer. When you don't play, you don't win. Because I think if the stats are right, the last eight games you've missed, Essendon have lost. Uh, well, you would know that better than I would. Oh, <laughs> rubbish. As if you don't know that statistic. <laughs> did, did, did you read you from the front line? <laughs> <last time? laughs> you told us to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you told me you wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe, right, with the stat sheet. What about the buy as well? That's another interesting stat across this year that you lost off the bye. Yeah, uh, I think it, um, it's a pretty poor, poor record for the entire competition. So um, logically, you would think that a bye would be a good freshener up and the, the, the team who had it had a, a real advantage, but um, it's not turning out that way. But you did. You, you were involved last night. Obviously, you weren't on the field, but you're in the coach's oh. box and your, your contributions are amazing, especially in the last quarter and it was really tight. Let's have a look at Cramery. He, he kicks this goal, you're back in it, all right? <coughs> all right, he misses. <coughs> but what you did in the box after that was amazing. This is you. Just straight after that, this is you. I mean, this is a man. You just watch you. You just, your mind's working 100 miles an hour, and that's true. It's a real contribution right there. What, it's withering. It's withering, isn't it? What were you thinking uh, at that time? It's a very helpless, uh, you know, feeling. You, you just, you just want to be out there, and as a player, there's nothing worse than being in rehab. And um, you know, you know everyone. Cause when you're playing, you know how hard you're trying, and you never try to make a mistake or miss a kick or miss a goal. And when you stand there or sitting there on the sideline, but you what, just think, what, well, why not? But well, what about in the box, though? What, what's happening around you? Did you get a real insight last night being yeah, in the box? Yeah, I mean, it does give you a good perspective about what happens, and I suppose you, you sort of realise how little... Um, you know, a change that occurs from the box. I mean, really... So you're saying the coaches are useless. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly agree, but as a player, you sometimes feel as if the whole game is controlled uh, by the people up in the box, and it's really not the case. Well, they're, they're playing cards, are yeah. they? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of conversations about Essendon in the next, you know, couple of days, and I imagine one of them's going to be about the three tools. You've got three... Well, two, essentially two Ruckman and a, and a Ruckman forward in Paddy Ryder, and you go to Subiaco next week, Patterson Stadium, the big open ground, and I guess the conversation's going to whether you can take those three big guys into too many more games together. Have you got a view on? Have you got a view on? I know it's hard for you to talk about teammates like yeah. this, but. Um, I think that w what will happen is that Hurls will most likely come back into the side, yeah. so that will probably force a hand. I think that there is a is when the players are playing well and the team is playing well and the, everyone's contributing, then I think it doesn't matter if you're tall or small. Uh, if the structure of the team is is what the coaches and the staff want and you're winning games, then it doesn't matter if you've got three or four big guys. Mm. But, but in terms of that forward pressure that everybody's trying to play now, once the ball hits the deck, if the big fellas can't. A 
apply that sort of pressure, can't do those things, sort of things physically, then I guess they become a bit of a liability. Yeah, and what what you really would love is that the the ball that they were receiving is you know up in the air yeah. so that they can make use of what they're in the the game for. And, and we probably weren't able to give them the best opportunities last night. Yep. Now David Hill is one of those big guys, and last night the umpire asked him to do something that is actually impossible. Have a look at this. Now, listen carefully. There's a free kick there. They have a little argument about it. Have a listen to the umpire. Again, I mean, he, is, he has played a really, really have influential game. Have a look at your eyes, game. mate. Have a look at your eyes. <laughs> how exactly do you look at your eyes? <laughs> is that how you do it? I don't know how you do it. You ever tried to look? It's a very difficult thing to do. That was probably a tame response from Hilly. <laughs> yeah, your footy club does a lot of great work, and we noticed the uh, yellow band around your shoulders last night, uh, around the arms of your jumpers, and it's a call to arms. Uh, everybody in footy trying to get involved in terms of helping out men's cancer. It's a fantastic thing that the Bombers are involved in. Yeah, and it's been brought about, as everyone knows, about um, Adam Ramanaskis and um, and what he went through, and I think it's in its sixth year this year. So it's, um, you know, I, th- I think about it, the cancer is the awareness. Everyone, it doesn't discriminate who it attacks. So, um, you know, as much as you can do, it's it's great that the, both clubs are to be part of it. Yeah. Joe, as a child football fan, you would have loved James Hurd. Then you were teammates. Now you're captain and coach, or the other way around. Yep. How has your relationship changed through those pretty significant phases? Well, it, it probably, um, I suppose, when when he goes into the coach. Uh, and you become a player coach relationship it has to change um, because you can't um, you can't have a working healthy working relationship if you, it's the conti- it's the same one based upon uh, teammates um, you can no longer bag the coaches with him <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, what it has meant is that um, you know our relationship has, has changed out of necessity um, yeah. I don't think it would work if you tried to stay the same way you were as teammates because yeah. you, you have to be able to um, you know work off each other in a different way and, and and uh, I think that that is something that is a work in progress, but yeah. we're sort of both, I guess, aware. So it probably makes you less close in a way. Yeah, well, I think you you probably um, you have a very different relationship as a player coach, and um, and it's probably unhealthy to try and continue that, you know, as what you were doing when you were teammates. <laughs> we clearly know you're a huge fan of Herdy's, and we know you love his inspirational pregame addresses, especially on the big occasions like Anzac Day. Uh, here you are talking about one of those inspirational addresses. <laughs> Heard he came in and spoke to the team before the the, gra- uh, the game, and uh, we came out and you know we were we were, we were hopeless. <laughs> fantastic! Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. No, no wonder he got the job. Was, no wonder he got the job. That was before he was coaching. He's, he's refined himself since then. They've thrashed both St Kilda and Hawthorne. In fact, uh, they gave Hawthorne one of the biggest thrashings Hawthorne have had in a long time. Sorry, do you want to say something, dude? No, Geelong, you idiot. <laughs> Magnificent stuff. Joe Watson uh, there with his father, Tim. What a great class. Beautiful, isn't it? If I had called my dad an idiot at that age, I would have got a clip over the ears. <laughs> Wait till the cameras, what you didn't see is when the cameras went off. <laughs> <laughs> now, the father son conversations have been in the news this week with uh, Blighty suggesting that Gary might, Gary Jr. might be better than his old man. How big, how big an influence does Tim continue to be with your career? Uh, well, I think it's uh, the influence is as a parent, you know, and it's like anyone. Um, uh, uh, it's just that we share the same passion, and that's for football, which is really fortunate. Um, and so I think that, that because of that, the passion that we share, it means that um, I'm able to, you know, bounce off ideas and he gives me some advice from time to time. It would be good if he'd talk you up a bit more, though. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't talk you up, does he? Um, well, it's, it's probably a very um, awkward moment. Like, um, you, Just you go know. for it, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, it's boring. Do anyway. you have to make, make time to not talk about footy as well? Just hold that oh, thought sorry. there for a moment, Joe. Yeah. It's a very good question from you, Sam. We're saying goodbye to Adelaide and Perth. They're gone. Answer the question now. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to re-ask the question, Sam. <laughs> You're driving me, Andy. Do you have to make time to not talk about footy as well? Uh, um, yeah, I suppose so. But it's just, you know, like it's just a normal parent relationship. And, um, you know, I have three sisters, so it's just a, a, a normal family, I guess. And, um, uh, you know, there's other things that we, we talk about. We don't just talk about footy only, but, um, you know, it's um, it, it's very hard when people ask you because it's you say to them, well, what's like having your dad, you know? Well, well I have it? to tell him not to talk about football, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. 
<laughs> it, it, it's sort of, I suppose it's just the, the curiosity. And, and it's one of the great things about AFL football is that fathers and sons, fathers and sons the same talk time. about footy all the time anyway. So, I mean, that's all mm. you've got, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, compar- the comparisons don't annoy you too much, then? No, 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 not anymore. No. All right, thank God for that because we're about to do one. Uh, here he goes. Let's compare Joe Watson and Father Tim Watson to work out who we believe could be uh, the best of the two players. So let's uh, begin the comparison here. Yeah. Uh, Tim Watson, senior debut at 15. Joe Watson, stacking shells at Safeway at 15. That's one to Tim. Uh, Tim, 100 games at age 20. Joe Watson, skin folds of 100 at age 20. Okay, <laughs> that's probably two to Tim. Let's keep moving through. Uh, back to back best of first 09 and 010. Oh, uh, to wear a bad scarf. That's one to you, Joe. <laughs> or could this be the tiebreaker? Close working relationship with James Hurd. Tim Watson, close working relationship with Andy Marr. That's definitely a win for you. That is two all. We can't split them. We can't split them. And to lead an on field protest in round one. <laughs> again, it's true. Outrageous. It's true. Against the substitution rule. Mm. 11 weeks on, are you as outraged by it as you were then? <laughs> um, I think it's a work in progress and uh, I think by the end of the year we'll have certainly a better idea of how it's going. As a player, I certainly feel as if I'm uh, undertaking more fatigue going into games. So okay. do you think your, hamst- or your, like your hamstring, that can happen at any time, mm. but I mean, are you able to measure your extra workload? Is there ways that the footy club can tell you that you're actually carrying a more significant load so far this year? Uh, yeah, there's ways that the, the club have, um, have been able to do some research and the statistics that they uh, hold, and um, they were certainly worried about me ch- trying to get yeah. to the bye before getting injured. Okay. Good on you. Good, good on you. <laughs> good on you for standing up for your rights, because you've got to. Because AFL players, I believe, don't get paid enough. I've got evidence. Dustin Fletcher, the, uh, the oldest oh. player in the league, been playing since 93. Look at this. He still has to steal pizzas <laughs> from the footy club to feed his family and his and his cat, so <laughs> terrible situation. I reckon he's delivering that. <laughs> hey, um, Joe, about to ask you, what's the worst thing a coach has ever said to you? Can you is there one that sticks out? Um, oh, you're, not, you're not going well enough, you're going to have to go to the twos. I mean... <laughs> that, that'll do it every time. That's pretty bad. Uh, not as bad as young Heppel copped uh, recently from his coach. What's the worst thing a coach has ever said to you? Um... You're weak as piss. <laughs> I've had that phrase ringing in my ears for years now. He, he, what you didn't say is that was said in the under 10s for Langana, so it was a bit harsh. <laughs> Joe, but it's always good to have you on the program. Uh, we're glad to hear that your hamstrings repair and you'll be playing next week. Yes. They need you out there, and good luck for the rest of the year. Thanks, Thanks Joe Watson, uh, our special guest on the program. Uh,